The side deserved that, didn't they? Yeah, without a doubt. We were by far the better side, and I think Justin would admit that anyway. Um, I mean, we should have been two. Th- we should have been two goals up, shouldn't we? In the first what ten five, uh, five, five ten minutes, Paul kind of two great chances with headers. But you know, typical Paul is there. He's, uh, you know, if he wasn't there to get them, I'd be upset. But no, with you know a bit more luck on the day, they'd have gone in the back of the net. But their keeper did pull off a, a few miraculous saves. To be honest with you, because we could have had a lot more goals, and we know that. Um, but I was very, very pleased. I mean, I t- you know during the week, uh, players kept dropping out, and then all of a sudden we're down to the bare minimum. I've had to bring a, a, world, a world Cup hero in onto the bench uh, in Paul Hall. Um, and then I'm thinking, Alan Mar- you know, got to get Alan Marriott back in the game. He, you know, starts really, really well. All of a sudden, he's got to come off, and he's got a dislocated finger. I'm thinking, is it ever going to end? We're going to have some good luck. And to be fair, you know, the, the, the lads played really, really well. I was so pleased for Connor Higginson on his uh, on his opening debut. I thought he did ever so well. Um, and he's just going to get better and better and better. But I thought it was a good team performance, and that's what I asked him yeah, to do. Um, I basically. Said to them at the at the the start of the game, I just drew uh, an up arrow, a down arrow, and one in the middle. I just said to them, you know, at the end of the end of the game, come in here. That's you've played really well. You're giving it your all. That's you haven't really really tried. And that one there as well. I let somebody else do it. I said, put put a signature on where you think you should be, and I put that mindset in them. And they just did tremendous. You know, they work good good work ethic. Yeah. Well, you just mentioned there that Alan Marriott's got a dislocated finger. Early days, yeah. But does that mean he's a worry for the FA Trophy final? Well, we won't know until he goes for an X-ray. I mean, if it's, if it's just a dis- dislocated finger, you know, you can't do a great deal with them anyway. But you know, if he gets it strapped up and it's inside a big glove like it is and it doesn't dislocate again, it's not a problem. Um, I mean, obviously, we've got to make sure there's no fracture there. So we're just we're just waiting to see. Uh, he's going straight off to the to the hospital now to get it to get it um, X-rayed. But, but how much of a blow is it that he's come back oh, after six months now? It kills me. I'm going to have to go and get to the goalkeeper on an emergency loan. But Groffy came in and was tremendous, wasn't he? You, you know, one thing we can say about this football club, we have got three very, very, very good goalkeepers. And, you know, I'm very lucky to have that. Well, back to the match today. You could have gone ahead inside a couple of minutes with Paul Connor's effort. But then for the fifth game in a row, you conceded the first goal. Yeah, so disappointing. And the lads are as well, you know. So I didn't have to say anything at half time. I just looked, I just said, what about the goal? And that's all I had to say, and they knew. They knew. They knew where it came from. It came actually from the halfway line, is where it really started. And then just, you know, we gift teams goals, and you know, if we, if we could just stop doing that, you know, we'd just be, we'd be a lot further up the league than we are now. Well, you briefly mentioned Connor Higginson. He came in today. He's come from non-league football, lower down, but he didn't look out of place. No, that's why I brought him. I've never had a problem. I always said that when his uh, his loan spell was, I was bringing him back to the football club because you must remember that although he's a, he was at Glatwell, he uh, he trained with us day in day out, and he looks as good as anything we've got out there. Um, you know, he's as good as his peers. Um, he's an exciting young lad, and he will come on and score goals. Believe me. I mean, he played out of position today as well. You must remember that he is an actual centre forward. Um, and you'll, you will see him in that position, I'm sure, before the season's out. Well, um, the man who got your goal late on, Louis Briscoe, cracking strike. But before that, were you thinking, this isn't <laughs> going to come, is it? I'll be honest with you. I mean, I've just said to Louis and all the lads in there, I was on the actual, I was on the actual headphones to uh, to Paul Hall, and I was going, he's not in the right position. He's not in the right. Look, he's not in the right. Oh, he scored a goal, Paul. Because <laughs> Paul Hall said to me, what are we doing about Louis? I said. You can't take him off because you know you, Louis, Louis can just come into a game at any time, and that's why I've always given that opportunity to stay on the pitch. You know you can get frustrated with Louis Briscoe. Um, I've had my frustrations with him, but I just know he'll pop up and score a goal like he did today, and that's why he's in the side. Well, you had a, a one-match ban. You were up in the stands. You're going to stay there from now on. It works well. Doesn't it? <laughs> Well, you never know, do you? I mean, I've, I, so I've got communication with Paul. It's not to be to be fair. Sometimes I don't think it is about what's in the dugout, really. You know, it's how the players perform when they go over, over the. You know, these read remi- need reminders. Perhaps I mean I've got a, it's a fantastic view actually from up there because you can see the you know the the length of the pitch behind one can, of the goals behind, behind goal. one of the goals behind our goal obviously the West End and you can see you can just see so much of the shape and that so I might just you know in future just go up there for the first half and then come down the second half I don't know just got to behave myself <laughs> <laughs> right well looking ahead to Southport they're a team lost again today they're in the relegation Maya but you know that doesn't mean they're going to be easy not at all you know be wary be wary of the uh, the wounded animal. Um, Southport, we, we beat them up at their place, but they gave us a difficult time and they were a real hard team, if I remember rightly. Uh, they've got um, a couple of players I know up there, um, and I'll know they'll, they'll you know, they, they are, they can be bullies, they can really be bullies. So we've got to match them in that, and then obviously I think our football should see us through. And uh, the injury situation, are you hoping to have any more back by then? Well, I'm hoping so. I mean, you know, another counter was upstairs today, and I'm thinking, have I got more injuries than I've got a first team? That's what I'm starting to think. Then Alan Marriott joins the injury list. I mean, 
you know, we're going to have the boys have been over the weekend um, to get some treatments, um, and then we'll have to reassess everything on Monday. Excellent. Well done today. Thank, Thank you. All right. Well, Connor, you came into the side today, started as well. First of all, how did that feel when you found out that you're coming straight from Glatwell and straight back into the first team? Well, you know, I was sat at home early with my mum and dad, and I was sort of uh, in two minds whether I was going to be on the bench or not. You know, uh, the gaffer, I've trained all week and I did all right. Uh, and the, the gaffer sort of pulled me upstairs before and says, you know, we're thinking about starting on the right hand side because uh, Dan Spence was he's still niggling. But uh, that obviously got me adrenaline pumping and, you know, I got really excited and ended up starting and, and doing all right, I think. Well, you didn't do too badly, did you? How would you rate your own performance? Uh, I'd, I'd give myself a good 7 out of 10. Uh, I, I could have been better. Um, you know, I would like to have a few more shots and a few more crosses, but, you know, it was just uh, they were a good side of in diamonds, so sometimes you've got to defend, and uh, I think we did that well today. Well, 2-1, victory, the right result? A perfect result, perfect start to a weekend. Um, you know, I'm, I'm delighted because we've, this is coming back off two losses, um, so, you know, it's a real lift for the team. Um, and take that into Tuesday night's game at home to Southport. Well, you were playing on the right wing today, as you've mentioned. You'd prefer to play centre forward, but you seem to adapt easily. Do you find you a versatile player? Well, that's on my CV. You know, I can play right or left, um, or a job just in behind the strikers. Uh, you know, as long as it means me getting the first eleven, I don't really mind wherever I play. I'll play centre half if I But you know, I thought I did all right. So, how did you find the experience playing in front of your home support? Seventeen hundred here today. Not the biggest attendance of the season by far but still to play in front of the fans that you used to be part of yeah well um, it's obviously local lad you know it means a lot to play in front of the fans uh, you know I love them to bits and you know I've got the utmost respect for them uh, you know it's the most I've ever played in front of actually today uh, so I was a bit nerve-wracking but um, you know the fans are excellent and the team were excellent and it's a great result now we know unfortunately you can't play in the Wembley final next month but still, what are your aims for the rest of the season? <laughs> yeah, that did you. Um, well, you know, I'm obviously a bit gutted, but, you know, with the injuries coming back and, and Adam Smith and Ashley Kane coming back into the fold, uh, you know, you're not worried about team selection because they're strong players and they can do a job. Um, but I'm just to, to cover them at the minute and hopefully I can keep my shirt. Um, and, you know, I, I don't regret playing for Glattel in the trophy. You know, we had a great run and a great set of lads and I owed it to them to play in the trophy. Um, but, you know, I'm obviously delighted for Mansfield getting the Wem get into Wembley and get to the final and hopefully win it. Well, Tuesday then, Southport, you're going to obviously be hoping that you've uh, staked a claim for another first team shirt. How do you rate them? Southport, they're a team that, I think, I don't know if they're into the relegation today after they lost, but uh, they're a team that are battling, they're in the mire. How do you think you're going to cope with that? Well, you know, sometimes they're the worst team to play. You know, down there, they're fighting for the lives and you know they'll come here all guns blazing and you know hopefully we can we can do a job on them and you know be professional about it uh, and get the three points and hopefully go on from there yeah and as well in front of the home support on the anniversary of the 12th stag campaign as well it's important that they got only their second victory of the year here in the league yeah you're right um you know we obviously we're all delighted to get the three points you know it's a big relief uh, playing here and winning uh, the 12th stag you know it's fantastic you know, set up that they've got, you know, raising money for the, the team and, you know, the manager and his, his transfer budget. Um, obviously, we're delighted to, to give him three points today. Well done. Yeah. Right, OK. Louis Briscoe, what a way to score the winner. Yeah, yeah it was nice. Uh, finally turned up in the game uh, in the last minute or so. So, yeah, yeah, really nice to get on the score sheet, but more importantly, get the three points. Did you feel as if a winner was coming when it was 1-1 for such a long time? Yeah, I mean, obviously, we've got... Give away a soccer goal or a lucky goal, and then we got back into the game. I thought we dominated the second half after that. The first half after that, you know, we've had chances and keep made some good saves. So yeah, it's nice to find, finally get a goal, even if it was the last minute. We just took that at the start. Yeah, well that's it. What is it about your side at the minute? You can't stop conceding the first goal. You always make it hard work for yourself. Yeah, we're definitely doing it the, the hard way. It's uh, a bit exciting for the fans, but uh, I don't know. But yeah, it's not nice to keep going behind. But if we can uh, st start doing that, we'll have it and get a few clean sheets. We're always going to score. Well, uh, how did you find it worked today? Because you had uh, a new teammate, Connor Higginson, on the opposite flank. Do you think it all worked well today? Yeah, delighted for him. You know, he's always buzzing around the, ch the changing room and on the training pitch. He's so enthusiastic. And I think that's what the fans like to see. You know, he's just he's given his heart out there today. And he's been sub near the end, got a standing ovation. So yeah, I'm really happy for him. But what the fans won't like to see is Alan Marriott going off after just 39 minutes after six months after injured. He's gone out with a dislocated finger that's hard luck on him isn't it yeah it's going for him because you know he's, he's worked so hard to get back from injury you know he's, uh, it's can't be nice for him well, it's not nice for anyone but it can't be nice for him after having such a long injury and then getting an injury he's never done it before he said for a goalkeeper which is rare so you know it's just a bit unlucky but if we can get him 
he's about fit and then we can get him in for Wembley because I'm not sure if Rafi can play there. Well, you personally, you're up to 10 league goals this season. How many more do you think you can get? That's a fair tally. Um, yeah, 10, 10 league goals, 6 goals in the court. So if I can get to 20, I'd be, I'd be happy with that. Another 4. But, like I said, I'm scoring every game if I can. Yeah, so now Southport on Tuesday. They're a team battling against relegation. How do you think you're going to approach them? Well, if, if we play like we did today, bar the, obviously the goal, I think we, we, we'll batter them, to be honest. Um, but, you know, you've got to take, take them uh, for what they are. They're going to be battling. It's going to be, will be difficult. They'll make it difficult for us. But if we play the way we can and just everyone give 110% like we have been doing, I don't see it being problems. Well, going into the game, what's the motivation at the moment, at this point in the season? Because still a long way off the playoffs, not going to get relegated. How do you make sure that you're still fully energised and fully going for the win? Um, well, I think playoffs is until that's mathematically not uh, can't happen. Then we'll, we'll just keep trying to win the games, take each game at uh, time. I know we're, we're quite a way off, but if we just win all our games, then we're not going to be far away. So just, just look at it like that. But obviously, with Wembley coming up, um, everyone's playing for the shirt now. We've got quite a few lads that are injured, so they're going to be coming back, raring to get a shirt. You know, everyone wants to play at Wembley. That's uh, every kid's dream. So yeah, we're, that'll inspire us as well. Great stuff. Cheers, Lucas.